Um, now there is another way uh, of using the component coming from, well it possibly can come from different problems and uh, the way you recognize the component could be very algebraic in the sense that you do some algebra you come up with certain quantity and then you recognize, oh by the way it looks like a component of something and then you see what that represents geometrically so let me give you an example of a situation like that uh, actually an example of a situation we already encountered uh, the distance from a point to a curve so let's look at that problem so a curve, a point, we think of a curve being parameterized and think of this point being fixed and the point S being on the curve moving in time so S depends on time and then minimizing the distance between the point and the curve amounts to minimizing the magnitude of the vector PS and then minimizing of that quantity amounts from calculus point of view to differentiating that quantity with respect to that time parameter and then equating that to zero finding critical points so uh, we practiced already differentiating the magnitude of a vector if that vector depends on time by replacing that with something using dot product right? the magnitude is square root of ps dot ps and then if I want to differentiate that magnitude I know how to differentiate the square root so it will be 1 over 2 square roots of the same dot product ps dot ps multiplied by the chain rule by the derivative of that dot product and then I apply the product rule to differentiate the dot product so it is ps prime dot ps now I'm talking about two vectors here plus ps dot ps prime divided by twice the square root well that square root is back the magnitude of ps so let me use the shorter notation and finally the numerator is twice the dot product that coefficient 2 cancels and I am left with ps prime dot product ps divided by the magnitude of ps and that is exactly the point where you can recognize a formula familiar from that consideration so this is going to be a component so why don't you tell me component of what with respect to what component of the vector ps with respect to ps prime is that right? the switch prime and prime here is that right? Mm -hmm. so that's what it is and then we can draw it because then we can see on the picture what ps vector is that's the one can we imagine what ps prime is? how should it look like? what's the meaning of ps prime? derivative of the vector ps what's the meaning of ps? 
what's the line tangent to that vector? Or to that? Well, PS prime, right? PS is position of that moving particle. Because P is fixed, S is moving, and PS points to us where the particle is now. And the derivative of position is velocity. And can we imagine how it should be? Well, it should be tangent. So we don't know at this point whether it moves right or left. It depends on how to parameterize the curve. But imagining it moves left to the, well, at this point, and the particle moves from right to left, then this component can be visualized as projection of this velocity vector onto that position vector direction. So what we got now is the meaning of the derivative. Not only the meaning of the equality, this derivative equals zero, because that would be the next step. The next step would, would be to say that the magnitude of PS prime should be equated to zero to solve for critical points, to solve for minimum or maximum, and we wanted minimum in this case. So equality of that derivative to zero means what? Well, it means that component is zero, meaning that the dot product is zero, meaning that two vectors are perpendicular, meaning that the velocity is perpendicular to the position 